all right guys how y'all doing today we fixing to talk about one of my favorite new toys um in one of my favorite places this here behind me this is a uh, bayou jessamine uh i've been coming here for i don't know probably 10 years uh when i first when i was a teenager got my driver's license that's the first thing on my list of stuff i wanted to do was to come up here and check this out bought me a little 200 hundred dollar 10 foot kayak that it's a miracle i didn't kill myself in out here in the river and uh you just see the woods behind me it's just awesome this place i just jumped some wood ducks this last day of duck season you know we got one more week in the deer season so i'm gonna start getting back on the youtube videos but uh one of my favorite places and we're gonna talk about something uh that i've had a lot of fun with this year a uh it's a swamp runner mud motor I done put about 60 hours on mine, uh, and we're going to just kind of talk about what I think are the pros and cons of the unit, and overall whether I'm happy with it or ain't happy with it after hunting. I've hunted damn near every day of duck season. Um, I think I've missed counting, you know, Christmas and New Year's and all that uh, when I had to be with my family. I don't think I've missed 10 days of duck season, hardly. Uh, killed a lot of wood ducks, killed some causeway ducks, some gadwalls, and some teal and stuff like that, and uh I've put this thing through the ringer. I've, I've took this motor and this boat combo I'm going to show you. I've killed deer out of it, ducks out of it. I've caught fish out of it. Took people up here joy riding. And I've had a lot of fun. And, you know, I've learned some things about it that I like and don't like. So let's talk about it. All right. So the first thing, this is the boat that I bought. And I've gone through a lot of little boats. This is a 1436 Weld Craft. It's a welded boat. And I lucked out and I got a good price on one. You can see it has a floor, so you're not tripping over your uh, your braces right there. You're not tripping over your ribs. You just got a smooth floor. Any water that gets in the boat, it drains through the floor and all ends up in the bilge area. So you ain't walking on slick and wet and nasty. It's got a trolling motor hooked up to it, and it come wired. You bow and stern lights. I got a switch right there in the corner. You can't hardly see it, but I got a switch. I can turn that off. Uh, super, super nice boat. Kind of on the heavy side with the floor. Um, but but just super sturdy. I've kind of kept it stocked. The only thing I did I added this seat on the middle bench seat uh, For my wife she likes to be comfortable when she rides and then my dad He's getting to the point where his back don't really like sitting on the bench seat no more uh, So I put that on there and you can also trim the passenger You can put them in the center or You can put them off to the side and then I'm usually standing here in the corner to operate the motor that I have on it and this motor is a uh, I built it it's a kit swamp runner sells it's a swamp runner medium kit made to run with like an 8 to about a 16 horsepower motor and that's a 13 horsepower uh, 420 cc uh, cylinder uh, predator just a single cylinder real simple motor got the integrated gas tank on it it does have electric ignition which is handy dandy i'm 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 digging that uh, over having to use the pull starter but it does have a backup pull start um and i bought this boat primarily uh for hunting just to get up in this little little waters like this something that you can jump logs and run real shallow mud and uh just kind of a, a four-wheeler boat you know it'll go anywhere and if it gets stuck is light enough it ain't too hard for one person to get unstuck and i ain't had no trouble with it i've run it 60 hours run it hard run it down in the marsh, run it in, you know, two inches of water with some soft mud and, and bulldoze through some logs and stuff like that. One person, two person, it's done real good. Uh, been good to me. I did put a, a floodlight up on the front of it, put a light bar on it, riveted that on there, and that hooks up to my trolling motor socket when I'm hunting and joy riding. I don't really take a trolling motor with me. Um, but yeah, this is the boat. I keep, I got a little extra gas in there in case I run out. That tank right there is good for about an hour, hour and a half of runtime. So uh, she runs about 15 miles an hour generally, a little more, a little less, depending on the loadout. Um, she'll get up on plane even with two people, which is nice. But these motors, uh, I liked. It was a real simple kit to build. Uh, wasn't nothing to it at all. Bolted on, and actually the the parts for it. I got that set of wrenches right there. It usually lives in that box. This is my kind of my go box. And it's just got tools and some first aid kit, some bug spray, and usually got some Vienna sausages and a couple bottle of waters in there in case I run into any trouble. 
Uh, so that motor, every tool that I used to build that motor is in that toolbox. So if I have troubles, I can completely break it down. I took a guy out a while ago and we had some issues. The muffler rattled loose. So uh, I was able to tighten the muffler back up and it wasn't no big deal. If something happens and you hit that skeg there in the back hard and it loosens that shaft up, you can tighten it if you break a prop. You can swap the props pretty easy. And I got a lot of props. And that is something, that's probably what I'm the least happy with, is these kits, they use an aluminum prop. And you can see, these props will break. If you hit a log or a cypress knee too hard, you'll break them props. And they ain't real expensive. They're about $8 a piece. But you can see the other thing. See how that thing's chewed up? It's all chewed up, nasty, serrated. And, uh, these boats run real good. I say real good. They don't run fast as the outboard, but, you know, they, they run and they cheap. And, uh, I think I paid all total. I was under a grand to get this motor in the equivalent horsepower outboard. If I went to Bass Pro and got a Mercury, which is about the cheapest outboard I found if I bought it new, I'd have two, two and a half thousand dollars in it. So they got a pretty good value for the money, but these aluminum props, they say that they're necessary on these kits. They say that you want to uh, sacrifice a prop instead of binding up the motor or shearing your, uh, your key on your motor shaft, because this is a direct drive. The motor spins, the piston makes the crankshaft spin, the crankshaft and the drive shaft is just connected straight to the propeller. You just go forward. It's a it's a one-to-one -one ratio. There's no gears or nothing. But it is kind of irritating. You hit a cypress knee, you'll break them props. Or if you run through, I've run through some shallow areas, had a lot of oyster shells, and you start to chew that prop up. And this prop, after just one trip through them oyster shells, they get so bad, you lose, you know, three to five miles an hour off your top end speed. Um, you know, which is kind of the difference between being on plane good and not so good, you know. Kind of takes you a little bit longer to get back to the boat ramp, and it don't take but one trip to do that. But the good news is you can carry a lot of props. You can see I got I got spares down in the bilge along with my oil filter. and a, See, that's quality sustenance right there if you're duck hunting. You got to have you some Viannas, a little bit of beer. Stay hydrated. Get your carbohydrates in. Um, that's the, that's the bad about it. Um, that's really the only thing I don't like about it. Um, I figured they'd be kind of hard to steer and turn around, but once you get them trimmed out, um, you know, they, they run pretty easy and you can use that skeg as a oar. You can kind of turn yourself around even with the motor running, which is nice. Or you can sit there and you can drop that thing all the way down in shallow water. You can see it's sitting on the bottom right now. We ain't running in, I don't know, a foot of water up in this little bayou. Foot, two foot. You can drop that. And you got an anchor. Kind of keep you in place, which is handy. Um, internal fuel tank. If you're making short trips on a small boat like this, you free it up. And they don't, you know, these motors, you'll see a lot of yang yang back and forth. You know, people saying that the American-made motors to go devils and stuff like that's better, and they are. They're they're built better. I talked with some guys from Backwater. Everybody else runs stainless steel props, which is a lot tougher than that aluminum right there. Um, and most of them, you know, they don't. The the people who sell the tie kits talk about that being the weak link, and um, basically the response I got from the guys at Backwater I talked to is if you build the motor right, you don't need a weak link. You'll just seize up a motor. Uh, you know, the motor will just, just stop and then you can crank it back up and it'll run is what they said. And I've, I've, there's a lot of people run them and I ain't heard of just a whole lot of people tearing up a motor. Uh, but these are, they're a lot softer steel. There is a lot of flex in this unit. So you can't really go horsing it around. There's some people say it ain't a true mud motor. Um, but the flip side of that, you know, to really power through just mud. And I've seen videos where people are just running mud. Uh, but you do need a lot more horsepower than that little 13 horse engine. And what you run into is kind of a catch 22. You get these small boats like this. Um, this boat ain't rated but for 25 horsepower. And that would be a big old engine on the back, especially 
you build a long tail, they're heavier than an outboard a lot of times. I just looked it up. A 20 horsepower Merc is only 100 pounds. And this unit right here, the way it's built, it's 13 horses. And it's like 130 or something like that. So uh, you need a lot of horsepower to push through mud. And a little boat like this, it just won't handle it. Um, you know, it's pretty stern heavy. By the time I get my 200 pounds back in here and a battery, and if you ran a remote fuel tank, that all adds up. You ain't got a lot of freeboard back there in your transom. Um, so that's that's my thoughts on that if you're running if i wouldn't run nothing like this i wouldn't get a tie kit if if i was running a big boat i'd get an outboard or i'd go with a more expensive option uh that, that was just built a little bit more robust but for a little budget combo something like this i mean you can see this is like i said we drop that skeg again you see it don't go down no depth at all um and you can see where people have come up here had to cut them logs where that log is still in here you can see the other end of it right there so you're constantly running over logs and running through sandbars and stuff like that and uh it's it's a handy little combo they don't go super fast but that means it's kind of hard to get yourself in trouble with them um you know and they they hard to break down you don't have to worry about uh you know you don't have to worry it ain't water cooled so you ain't got to worry about an impeller uh breaking a blade you ain't got to worry about your water cooling channels getting clogged up you don't have to worry about running out of oil in your lower unit or having a bad lower unit seal and and getting water up in there and corroding your gears um there's not a lot of issues you know it's a single cylinder um less cylinders less problems uh there's just not a whole lot that can go wrong with them. You get the electric start with the backup rope start on them. Everything's real easy to work on. The most common issue I've seen with outboard motors and small engines is your carburetor. And your carb right here is very accessible. That's your carburetor right there behind all this. You pop out two 10 millimeter bolts and pull your carb and it don't take just a minute. And you can buy that whole carb, not a carb rebuild kit. I've rebuilt the carburetors on them and OMC motors. And, uh, it, it usually costs twenty thirty dollars for the carb kit well you can buy that carb right there for fifteen dollars just put a whole brand new carb on it and uh you know spark plugs and and your carburetor that's about all that can go wrong on this if something happens you throttle control you can see this hooked up that's just a bicycle cable so that's that's simple to replace if anything goes wrong uh you got a gravity fed tank so you don't got to worry about a fuel pump. You know, if gravity stops working, stops feeding your fuel, we got some bigger problems. <laughs> so I, I like it there. It, it has been, you know, 60 hours ain't just a lot of run time, but I've run it. You can see that's the tack I put on it. Uh, you can see 59.5 will be, will be done run at 60 hours by the time I get back to the boat ramp. And uh, overall, I like it. It'll, it'll get you a lot of places you know where generally you can only get through there if you got a kayak or a canoe or something but it'll run 15 miles an hour um you could build something like this you'd have about a thousand dollars in your motor uh and you could get if you could find a riveted boat this year you couldn't hardly find an alumacraft or tracker riveted boat just for various reasons covid more people fishing and they had some troubles at the plants but you know you could put this set up boat motor and trailer together for probably two and a half thousand dollars get everything brand spanking new two and a half three k and uh you can't hardly get if you just get a 20 horsepower merc you're you're already out that much and you still ain't got a boat or a trailer you know so they're real economical um that's that's about the only con is in props and you can buy stainless steel props but you go from about an eight dollar prop to a hundred hundred and twenty five dollar prop and uh i just don't know with this to keep the cost low they do use some cheaper steel on your 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 shaft and your 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 outer and inner shaft um the bolts that come with it i need to replace these bolts you can see i painted them to try to protect them but you can see that bolt's got some corrosion i need to put stainless hardware on this thing before that comes back to bite me but uh yeah i i like them and thus far would recommend them and the cool thing everything on the kit there ain't hardly a component on this kit if you order from swamp runner you can order the components and that whole shaft right there i don't think cost 150 bucks uh there ain't a part on here cost cost more than about 50 bucks for the most part and that whole engine right there is about i want to say i paid 300 dollars for it 
with a two-year warranty over the counter no questions asked exchange so they say at harbor freight uh parts are cheap for it if you want to get it worked on you can take the engine off and take it to a small engine shop small engine repairmen generally charge less per hour than outboard mechanics uh, which is a good thing my outboard mechanic here local charges just about eighty dollars an hour if memory serves uh, with a two hour minimum so you take to a lawnmower mechanic there's a lot more of them available if you live inland especially and they charge maybe twenty dollars an hour for shop time you know parts are cheaper labor's cheaper and you know push come to shove for less than what your typical mechanics bill would be if you had some engine problems say something happened and you you know just just burn up you your piston or something like that or, or blew a head gasket or something say you just shot the motor go go spend three hundred dollars and you know turn a half dozen screws with a wrench set and you got a brass bank and new motor back on it uh Maintenance is pretty easy. I got a grease gun. You just want to keep that shaft greased good. And uh, there's got a, it's got a couple bushings you can replace if they wear out. And really, I just I run ethanol free fuel in it. And every 20 hours on the tack, I just changed the oil today. Put a quart of synthetic 10W30 in it, and that's about all I've done with it this duck season. So other than keeping it painted just so it don't rust, I painted it one good time and. I'll probably make a habit of painting it once a year. I'll take it now. We done got up here in this little bitty bayou, and uh, this is a place that leads to a lake. And we're going to run the rest of the way to where this bayou behind me opens up into a lake. We're going to maybe take a look at that. And uh, we just just kind of looking around. This place has got a lot of wood ducks. I've seen a lot of hogs and deer up in here, and I think come later this year we're going to come back up in this lake that most people can't get to and we're going to run some jug lines me and my wife are so we're going to go scout it out see what it does this believe it or not we ain't running in but about two foot of water and the water's up a foot or two last time i come up in here i was running in maybe six eight inches of water should have done the video then it was more impressive but let's uh let's take her for a run see what she does so this is her at idle and it generally idles depending on current about three to five miles an hour regardless of what your load is it's got some pretty good torque on it we're gonna get up under this tree we're gonna open her up a little bit it's real fun to run this thing wide open on skinny water there we go baby She don't go fast, but she do go. under this Ugh, barely <laughs> see if we can we may not have to jump it but we may have to jump this log a little good hunting and fishing back here.
video, be sure to like and subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot of videos this summer running this boat, catching some catfish. Maybe some crappie if we get lucky. Y'all check it out. Be good.